This video is brought to you with support from my patrons on Patreon. Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital and today it's another layout update where I'm hooking up the DCC system for the first time and we're doing some testing, which means we're running some trains. Welcome back everybody. You can see that we are over at the layout today, slightly shifted from where we normally are. And you can see I got a train running around, which means that this layout is up and running. I've got the new DCC system hooked up. I have been running like crazy. I'm gonna show you guys all the testing that I've done as well as the new DCC system, which is a new variation on DCC++ that I'm sure a lot of you know about. So let's dive into all the updates. Work on the layout this time, it starts with rough building placement. I'm doing this now so that I can put foam down in the proper position so that the buildings will sit exactly where I want them to be. Once I have my marks, I remove the buildings and begin cutting the foam to size. This is done using a hobby knife for some deep scoring lines and then snapping the foam. I end up doing three layers of foam and I glue them in place with latex caulk. I weigh them down and let them dry overnight. While they are drying, I go ahead and install the DCC system. This is a DCC++ EX base station with Wi-Fi. This is an improved version of the original DCC++ system. I am working on a full build and review of this system, but so far I am very happy with it. Okay, so that is everything that I've added on to the layout. Now, the next thing I really need to do is I really need to begin testing. And testing is something that I really haven't done a great job of in building my previous layouts. And because of this, I've had a lot of issues with different locomotives from different manufacturers having different breakdown spots on the layout and I want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So I'm going to be testing rigorously with all my locomotives, all my most touchy rolling stock because by now I know which pieces of rolling stock are my touchiest and I'm going to go through the generalities of my testing process. So let's get started on that. I have six locomotives that will be the mainstays of my layout thus far. Two Broadway Limiteds, two Fox Valleys, one Cotto, and one Atlas. I begin my testing by doing runs around the layout. This includes running over turnouts and crossovers at various speeds and directions. This crossover in particular has given me the most trouble in the past, so I test it rigorously. Next, I test the double crossover. This one works very, very well. Now for my train derailing test. I hook up my lightest cars in the front with the heavy ones in the rear. This will put the most stress on the joint between the locomotive and the first car. The last three open hoppers are Broadway Limited import cars and they are properly weighted, so they add a lot of additional weight to the end. The first car is my most prone to derailment. Passing over the double crossover is smooth. But the single crossover causes a derailment. I repeat the test with different locomotives and get similar results. Even at slow speeds, the car derails. 
I'll show you my verdict and what I ended up doing at the end of the video. Now it's time to test the sidings. I run my Jeep 60 switcher on each. I electrically isolate each siding to test its feeders. Next up, it's yard testing. The first thing I do is I test the electrical conductivity of each siding. Now for capacity. When I was planning this, I made it work for 20 cars and three locomotives with no foul turnouts. All cars I'm testing are at least 50 feet. I am just able to barely squeak in 20 cars as well as two SD70s and my Jeep 60. The last test is an endurance test. I run a train for 30 minutes straight to make sure the DCC system stays up and operational. Okay, about that crossover. I decided it would be best to replace it with a double crossover. This also meant changing out the straight section adjacent to it as well because the length of the crossover piece had changed. The straight section also had feeders attached to it. I cut the feeders, drill out the holes for them, and re-solder them to the track. I then reconnect everything back up and retest the entire section of track. First, by simply rolling over a single car, and then I run my train at stress test with even more weight at the end. And it passes with flying colors. Well, there you go. That's what I've got going on so far on the layout. We are so close to being able to start doing the fun stuff, the scenery stuff. Got trains running. I'm actually able to do operations now with all the testing that I've done, but I don't have any buildings or scenery or anything like that that give it that fun aspect, which that is coming up very, very, very soon. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. I want to say a big thank you to all of my patrons. They're listed right here. You can become a patron for as little as $1 a month. You can check that out over there. They get some exclusive photos and behind the scenes and looks at what I've got coming up next. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, play with trains, and happy railroading. I could do this all day. I'm totally serious. I could follow this train all day. It's very relaxing.